Alrighty, so it's time to look into the character build for Goldre and Veto. So we'll start things off with Goldre himself. With Goldre, of course, I mean, one thing you want to take note of is, of course, when it comes to the barrier that he has on his skill 2, it works off from um, his HP percentage, right? 15% of his max HP will come, will come across as a barrier. Now, of course, um, when it comes to working on the skill, you can get that percentage uh, rising up so clearly you want to make sure that his HP is up there so that way you can benefit from having a much bigger shield but just in general the way I tend to go about building my Godre was give him his um, HP up giving make sure I've got a decent amount of HP to get a, a decent amount of um, shield give him the speed you know he's a support unit so his base speed is already somewhat decent 115 there you go and then just make sure that he's living now you can go down that route on if you want to get rid of the HP to add damage you can do so that is an option if you want to go down that route so realistically it'll be your basic route of you know uh, if anything what i would say is if you do choose to go for the attack make sure you um put a four piece in to give you the additional damage but then when it comes to the uh, six piece uh leaning with the defense unless you've got an hp slot then obviously make sure you've got two hp slots unless your subs that are providing a ton of HP, then you can open up and actually make room to uh, have it so you're putting in more defense, more attack as the main stat, because the sub stats is, is providing a ton of HP. That's if you want to go ahead and build your Gordon. I have nothing built for him, so this is the best that I can do. Well, I know I could do a little bit more better, but I don't want to take off gears right now on my current characters, but... Yeah, this is pretty much what I uh, have got to use with um, so far. Obviously, with the uh, sub stats, two things you need to cater to healing and defense realistically those are going to be your two things um or health should i say not healing his hp and defense outside of that it depends on what you want to do with your gold if you want to build him up more in a tanky manner then of course you head towards more in the tank um path in certain in, in in terms of um like crit resistance etc or you can go about and you know buffing him up on the attack department maybe even give him crit rate you know but from what I've seen, more people tend to go down that route of uh, making him a bit of a tank. You can also, if you want to get rid of the HP, you can add in the uh, toughness, get that extra 5%. I think it's 5% or 4% uh, for running the two-man skill or even the crit resistance, you know? That's if you really want to tank him up and keep him around because at the end of the day, it, 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 it is the skill buffs on what makes this character, not so much like the damage and whatnot. So keep him, along, keep him alive and providing him that longevity is key vital so yeah as long as you've got the defense and speed at that last slot realistically you can play around with it give them hp give them toughness it really just depends on what you have gear set wise but that's basically uh, i would advise the best way to go about building up your gold rather than deciding to give him damage to be honest but you can do so if you want to do attack defense and speed then you can do so but make sure obviously he's got a decent amount of hp so you can make good use of um, gaining a good amount of barrier not only just for himself but the ally that you choose oh yeah and um accessories yeah just push more into the uh defense if you can and then sub stats go for hp and um, it'll be either crit, direct crit damage more than likely for most people uh, as the main stats but yeah as for the skills realistically um it is just the second skill which you want to max out because then the second skill will give you an additional uh, 4, 8, 12, 16%. So altogether, I am now getting a 31%. So grants designated ally um, for two turns a 15%, sorry, 31% of my max HP as barrier. And that is, that's counting for me and the ally of my choosing. The other attacks is just buffing up him on the damage. And I mean, yeah, I don't... I don't typically take for damage so realistically it's just a second skill you need to worry about on um, leveling that up all right so when it comes to the talent tree um it's going to be magic attack and then battle frenzy those are going to be the two ones that you want to apply um when it comes to the middle stone uh you can just go about giving him the boost on the magic attack and the uh, the regular attack and magic attack right doesn't really matter what uh, rarity just if you have it you know just throw that in there um when it comes to the defense side of things you want to give him the max hp five percent and then of course the endurance and then when it comes to the middle stone um you can throw in the uh additional defense buff that you can apply to him so whether it be 1200 800 depends on what stone you have but just buffing up on the defense will be more than enough and then on the support side of things of course clearly middle stone will once again be providing him with that 3500 hp or whichever stone that you have to um 
to throw in there, but make sure it's giving him more HP so that way you can benefit <laughs> from it on the second skill. And then, of course, when it comes to the um, the do, 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 uh, stones themselves, I think swiftness and increased damage resistance will be the better choice, to be honest, uh, between everything else. So, yeah, just kind of keep it keep it nice and easy. Keep it nice and easy. So, there you go. Alrighty, so for Gouldre, of course, if you don't manage to get his Grey more, because, I mean, realistically... Um, I, I don't really care about the passive. <laughs> it is the second skill buffness that I actually do really like about it with the additional increase all attack, you know, 40%. You can't go wrong with that with all that he's providing, you know? So that does, it, it, it is nice in that department. Um, but, of course, uh, what you guys can do as an alternative is if you have Sally's, you can throw Sally's in there. Because with Sally's, it's giving you that all attack. So you can kind of just kind of, you know, if, if you don't get it, it's A-OK. -okay. You can still get that all attack buff by having Sally's Grey more. So there's that. Um, you might be also be able to benefit from um, Gifso's uh, Grey more too. Again, working in that um, HP department. Um, that that being said, of course, you can always uh, uh, throw in the Adventurer's Journal to get the uh, increase on the max HP. Again, that will benefit Gordra in terms of the barrier play, of course. Um... Who else? I don't think there's not really much of an... I mean, you can also throw in Charlotte's if you want to get that ultimate. Get that invulner invulnerability play coming in consistently. That would be pretty nice. Um, yeah, increased damage resistance if you want to get, throw this in there. I mean, it's nothing too crazy. But again, you can always throw in the Moonline Necklace. That will always help him out. Um, being a bit of a tank uh, and absorbing a lot. So there, there's always that. But uh, yeah... Grey Moors, I mean, you've got a decent amount of options on what you can throw in. Alrighty, we've looked into Gordre, and now let's move over to my boy Third Eye Awakening Veto. I should mention while we're here is that this is the alternative um, uniform, or uniform costume that you'll get. Um, I'm not too sure when Global will get this, but bro, this, this fit right here, bro, my boy Veto looking way too clean. So when it comes to Veto, the number one key thing you want to make sure is his HP is somewhat decent because his enhanced taunt causes him to restore 10% of his max HP when he takes damage. And then, of course, on his second skill, he can heal himself back uh, with 50% of his max HP as HP recovery. Now, if you work on the skill, you can get up to 20%. So, obviously, max HP is key for this man. So, this is one of the gear sets that I run where he gets a, uh, was it, the 5% fortify? Yeah, 4%, there we go. So basically making him a tanky of a unit. So giving him a good amount of defense, a decent amount of HP. Don't really care about the attack. Because, I mean, again, you keep in mind, you get that 40% increase uh, in uh, as a buff in proportion of the lost HP that he gets, of course. Now, um, with Veto, if you want to opt out from not having the extra 4% fortify and giving him the double HP gear set to what I previously showed you guys with Gordre, then you can quite easily take that gear set on. So you can get rid of this too and then you can apply the HP. I think that might be way more beneficial, to be honest, <laughs> to have. Um, I really wouldn't advise to get putting in damage. Unless you want to, you can you can quite easily go down the damage route and then HP, no, damage, defense, speed. Um, yeah, or you can just get rid of speed. Although tanks, I would say, kind of need speed. Otherwise, they're just way too slow and getting outlapped, to be honest. And that's the last thing you want from Veto. Because you want him to come in and torn up and whatnot and kind of hinder the enemy. So, yeah. Obviously, when it comes to building him in the, uh, what do you call it? Uh, when it comes to my brain, my brain, my brain, <laughs> substance, uh, make sure you've got the HP up, make sure you've got the defense up. And then outside of that, just keep working on that, the crit resistance, um, the endurance. Uh, just build up those when it comes to uh, with, with the substats tankiness tanky 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 that's that's what you want for veto um, because that enhanced taunt will just hinder the enemy to the point where your other allies or your other teammates should be able to make quick work since veto is kind of the focus fire and whilst he's taking damage he's also healing at the same time obviously with the gear sets themselves i've just piled on the defense that that's basically it uh, this was crit rate but that's all i can do for right now so yeah, um, but yeah, that's pretty much Veto in a nutshell. Um, pretty much same as Gold, to be honest. So yeah, um, pretty much for the talent, uh, I think more than likely it will just be the attack and crit, crit rate, unless you want to get the damage dealt and then the attack. Either way, as long as attack is available there, you can kind of mess about with the two, but I tend to keep the crit rate just to you know get that chance of hitting a little bit more harder. Um, oh, also... 
when it comes to the main stat, just keep it as um, magic attack and war attack, right? Regular attack, magic attack when it comes to the middle stone. Um, defense, pretty much the same as Goldray. Keep it as max HP, endurance, and then of course, um, when it comes to the defense carved stone, uh, just give it more defense to be honest, you'll be fine with that. And um, more HP, so put in that HP stone, and then for um, uh, Veto, yeah, you want to have damage resistance on, and so keep the swiftness in, so that way you, you've got uh, that additional plus one coming in, so... Yeah, but more more HP, more 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 HP. When it comes to Veto and working on his skill, um, I would personally work on his um, ultimate because you want to have a high chance to apply the enhancement on the enemy, the enhancement taunt because it's it's at forty percent, but you can get an additional thirty percent if you max it out, and you kind of want that um, because I mean second skill already is decent enough. So once you work on the ultimate, and once you get the enhancement taunt up. Then you can focus on the second skill to get the extra defense buffs alongside with that additional 5% HP recovery. Um, if you want to, uh, I guess, work on the first skill, and you can do so because, I don't know, some people might look towards and might want to get some damage off from him. So, yeah, but essentially the way this Veto is working is he takes, uh, well, hopefully with RNG on your side, he makes himself the focus fire. And he is literally the definition of a punching bag. That is Veto in a nutshell. I know I should have mentioned that in the um, showcase video, but you guys, will, well, I'll go on PvP and you guys will see. He is built to be a punching bag while your other teammates go in for that sneak attack. You know, and so you guys know the deal. He is a tank, and you just want to make him absorb. So if you've got Mars' skill page, throw that in there. If you've got Sekei's skill page, throw that in there. Increase max HP and then increase def defense. Can't go wrong with that. That actually might help you. That actually might be the better option, to be honest. Because you've got that HP working on you um, for, uh, for you. So there's that. To be honest, if you've got Radis' um, skill page, this could be picture perfect. Throw that in there. Get that barrier play going on. Um, that Actually, well, to be honest, that might actually help you out pretty nicely, if I'm being completely honest. In terms of you kind of be in a punching bag and then at, at the start of every wave you get in well i've, I've thankfully got a, a maxed out radis grain but i'm actually throw this in here actually just for one of the pvp vids that actually might work out pretty nicely so there's that um but yeah uh, again if you've got the necklace throw that in there i feel like mysterious glowing orb might also work increased damage resistance and then has a chance to taunt the enemy for one turn if they have a debuff i feel like that might I mean, if you're unlucky from getting your hearts torn, or if you're kind of waiting for the ultimate to come back around, I mean, that might be pretty nice to kind of keep that punching bag meta going on for Veto himself. So, yeah, I think it's fairly simple on what to apply for Veto. He's there as a punching bag, so what's the one thing you need for a punching bag? To take a lot of hits. So that's exactly what we're trying to do when it comes to giving him that perfect Greymore outside of him not having his own Greymore, right? But yeah... I think that's everything. That's all I wanted to go through when it comes to building their kits or building them up in general, um, and how you should really look look at it when it when it comes to each of these characters. But um, yeah.